the type of trigger that we need to be done with if we want to be the center, the eye of the hurricane, that which does not move, that which does not waver, that clarity which does not flinch at the sight of something horrible. That's what is required if we wish to bring down into this earth those higher dimensional frequencies, which I believe you are ready to be an ambassador for. And so if we can extend the amount of people, expand the amount of people, the number of people that are able to successfully be of service in this way, this powerfully, we can truly make a change with this retreat right here. We can truly cause a tsunami of triggerless people, triggerless ambassadors. Imagine, if you will, something happening that used to trigger you, that maybe even triggers you right now. Can you think of something, anything, whether it's a terrorist attack or something really personal, something your partner says or does or anything that happens in your local community or something I say, perhaps. Imagine something that triggers you, that has seemingly the power to extend a portion of your being, of your body, into that whirlwind, into that shitstorm. And then you wonder why your arm is full of shit, why you feel bad, in other words. Is it because you are attached to all the debris that's flying around inside that storm that's being picked up? And you see anything that's able to be picked up by a shitstorm literally is not yours to begin with. Because when we are in complete alignment with ourselves, we do not feel perturbed. We do not feel disturbed. We do not feel affected. We can feel moved. We can expand at the sight of what's happening. We can be in awe of the mystery that unfolds in physical reality. But we are not disturbed. We are not wavering from our integrity, from our alignment, from our dedication, from our focus, and from our conviction that the vision that we envision, the vision that we download, that we tap into, which is that already available fourth density field of information that wants to emerge from every cubic centimeter of our third density space-time reality, it wants to emerge like a, a flower taking up space. Fourth density energy wants to, wants to unfold inside out third density space-time vibration and transform it into a full-fledged fourth density vibration. And so in order to bring that out, we need to be tuned into the vision of that and we need to be transcendent to the biases that we once held so dear. So imagine something that normally triggers you. And now imagine a version of yourself that's standing right next to you. F feel the trigger right here in your body, in your mind. So imagine something that disturbs you, something that you can think of, a memory perhaps, that disturbs you. And I'll just give you 20 seconds to conjure up something. Maybe close your eyes. <laughs> like what's perhaps the most disturbing thing to you? What's the hardest to reconcile with the wisdom that we're sharing here and the love that we're talking about? What does not compute for you yet? What is not yet included in the one infinite creator's creation for you? What is that thing that stands out that triggers you? Pick one, if you have many. <laughs> okay, got it? All right, can you feel it a little bit? Can you imagine it? Can you, you might not feel the full force of it as it would actually happen organically, but you can at least step into the memory of how you got triggered before by this, correct? Okay, so pretend that that's you for a second, which is what you normally do when you get triggered. You pretend that that is you. <laughs> and now envision next to you a version of yourself looks exactly the same in terms of external appearance, an exact copy clone of you, another version, except even though you guys are able to interface, you're able to see each other in this reality from the personal point of view, that version of you is actually perceiving a parallel reality. They're actually experiencing themselves differently. It's a different point of view of the same scenario. Imagine that version of you, which is another version of you. It's as intimate to you as the one you just pretended to be. And imagine what it would be like for that version of yourself who does not get triggered by anything. Anything. There's no taboos. There's no activism, there's no feminism, there is no any kind of ism. 
triggerism. There's no triggerism. <laughs> that version of you is absolutely centered in the eye of the hurricane. There is no flinching happening whatsoever. These eyes do not blink. Same scenario. So imagine this version of you witnessing the same scenario that triggered the other version of you. Version A, let's call the trigger happy version of you, version A. And the triggerless version of you, version B. How does version B experience the same scenario? And don't bring with you the biases from version A. Really imagine being outside of your bubble of everything that you know and hold dear, all your beliefs. Yes, that includes your ideas of compassion, that includes your ideas of activism, that includes your ideas of what's right and wrong. For a second, bypass all of that, leave behind all of that, knowing that you can never lose your humanity, you can never lose your heart, you can never lose your sensory perceptions and your intuition. So don't fear stepping outside of the biased self. You'll be quite all right. You'll be quite loving. And imagine what this version, this triggerless version, absolutely unable to get triggered. What does this version experience in the same scenario, looking at the same event? Feel that for a bit. Can you feel the difference? Does it, does it, who is scared by the prospect of seeing life without trigger? Raise your hand if you feel a little hesitancy. Okay, that's good. So you like it. So you know that this is the way to go. So you know that your biased self is not actually what you prefer. You prefer the triggerless one, the powerful one, the free one, the one that cannot be disturbed by ideas of right and wrong, by ideas of this should not be part of creation, or anything along those lines. You want that, you know it's possible, and you know that there is greater wisdom and love to be found in that version of you than in the version A that gets triggered, correct? So you know that's good, that's wisdom, that's maturity, to know that the one you keep choosing is actually not the wisest option. Now, simultaneous with that wisdom and maturity then comes the stupidity of why don't you change? <laughs> I don't hear any responses. <laughs> Who believes that they can't change? Raise your hand. Who believes that they cannot change their perspective? One person. That's great. Welcome. <laughs> Good luck this week. <laughs> Who believes they can change, but, hold on. Who believes that they can change, however, they don't know how to? Raise your hand. They feel a difficulty, a visceral blockage when it comes to changing into the version that they know is the better version of themselves. Who feels they can, it's possible, but they don't feel clear on how to? Raise your hand. Okay, I'd say that's about half the room, one-third to about half the room. Who believes they can change, but they don't simply because they're not ready to. But when they are ready, they will change. They already know how to change, but they appreciate their own stubbornness, their own insistence, and they're okay with that. <laughs> Who is okay with not changing even though they know they're messing themselves up? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows they can change, and this is the first moment they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I kind of, I can kind of change. Anyone? Nobody. Okay, interesting. Oh, okay, a few people. Maybe that's not a category. Maybe I just made that up. <laughs> what then? Are you not inspired for that change? Are you not inspired to change? Why have you not already transcended the biases that you have? It's a good question. Why have you not already transcended the biases or transformed, if you will? Yes. She says, she thinks it's habit, what other people think. Okay, thank you. Habit and what other people think. Apply the same thing to what other people think. Imagine the version of you that cares about what other people think, and you will inevitably get caught up in the storm. Inevitably, a part of your body will be ripped off, right? If you want to stay fully centered with every part of your body, with every, and by body, I mean being. In this case, it's an analogy. 
If with your full body, your full being, you wish to be centered, you wish to channel power, you wish, wish to channel inspiration and love and light wherever you go, however you go about things, then you have to not care about what other people think. 